Hi folks, I'm Matt, and a question was asked by one of my subscribers, how do you get your own board game group? And I thought that was a great question, and maybe I should answer it. So today I'd like to give you my experience on how I built my gaming group and how you could possibly do the same. Now, if you don't know, I have a gaming group of, well, I used to have one about 18. I'm going to lower that to about 12 now, it seems like I have, that can always depend on. And uh, I split them up because to me the perfect number is anywhere between four to six. You probably don't want to uh, bring more people in at one time than that. You may have tons of friends who get interested after a while, uh, but that's about the limit to mine. And I'll switch them out every once in a while. Some people are gone, or some people need to take a break. I feel some people want to come every time, and you know I'd like to uh, you know accommodate for everyone. But anything above that. Games get too long, you know, it takes forever to get a game up. So, in fact, the first time when I started, we started with three people. Uh, the co host for Saturday Morning Salmon Flange was me, Mikey, and CJ. And that's how my gaming group started. And how we started is we got a game that all of us were interested in. Of course, my gateway game into modern, you know, contemporary board games was Zombies by Twilight Creations. Uh, who doesn't like shooting zombies, right? The theme was really cool, and we all loved it, and we all played it, and we're like, yeah! And so every Friday it was zombies, 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 zombies. And of course, we started inviting friends. And that just, that's like the, the kindling before the big fire, right? Because one friend comes in, they tell their buddy about it. They're like, I gotta get on, in on this. And then we were getting like six, and then eight, and then ten. That's when I had to break. When it started to get to eight to ten, I was like, we need to break this up. It's taking too long to play a game. But uh, we had a lot of fun. We'd always play zombies. It was a lot of, it was some good, really good times. Now, there are some other games I brought in, especially this past year that I'm trying to change the group up. So if you have several games, you may want to introduce them to different ones at different times. That way you're not playing the same game over and over and over again. Now I think it's fine that my friends love that game, but you have to decide what game does your friends get interested in? What perks their interest? Is it zombies? Maybe not. Is it something else? Folks, there are a billion gateway games that are out there. There's Ticket to Ride, which is very popular. Um, I don't particularly like it, but it is a very simple game. I think people would really, I know why people get into it. Uh, Catan, Sellers of the Catan, uh, a game that I really do love as gateway games go. Uh, Pandemic's another one. Uh, you just have to decide what interests them. Now, for me, Pandemic probably wouldn't be the best of those starter games because the pieces don't look that cool. Uh, I, I would do something that looks a little cool. And you say, well, Matt, Catan looks kind of boring too. Yeah, but for some reason, those cards, you just really get into it. And you, you see Catan everywhere. It's on, book, you know, it's on Books a Million, uh, Walmart. Everyone has it. So it's kind of a very popular game. For that reason, I think it'd be interesting. But something like Zombies with the little figurines, that instantly grabs people like, oh, this looks cool. And of course, it is. So find whatever their theme is first. Just gauge what they like and then bring it out. Also, do not bring out games that take longer than an hour. If you get your game group together for the first time and you bring in something like Twilight Imperium, yeah, that's a fantastic game, but I would never show that to someone. It'd be too much, it's too confusing, and they'd probably shut down, and sometimes it, take, it takes too long, they'll be too bored. That's overdoing it. A better example would probably be Firefly. Everyone loves Firefly, right? So you think, Firefly, great starter game. No, wrong again. It's not a good starter game. Uh, people get really confused. There's a lot of rules with Firefly, and it can take a couple of hours to play. So for that reason, I would move Firefly to the side. You can tell people about it, but let them get interested in a few other games before introducing what I call just a little bit more advanced level games, and they'll be more acceptable to staying more than one hour per game. Uh, that's the other thing. Make sure it's an enjoyable experience. Ambiance is the key word here. Uh, you get the right ambiance. Now, a lot of times uh, we would play music. I don't play music as much as I should. I should always have music going. I think everyone should have some sort of music. Uh, I have played scary music when we're playing, you know, scary games. I have played, uh, you know, just fun music at any random time. When Firefly comes on, I have the Firefly soundtrack for the TV and the movie, and I play those as we play. It's a lot of fun adds a little extra uh, to the game, and music just helps uh, time go by. Also, provide snacks. 
not much, chips and drinks, you know, maybe a few cookies, or some sweets or something, or a lot of times I provided like chili or hot dogs or something easy to make, nachos, and let them help themselves. Because when you're eating and you got music playing, you're playing board games, it's very social. And I think the ambiance really matters a lot because I've always made sure to have plenty of snacks and food, okay? And, and every once in a while I'll play uh, you know, music when I think about it. Uh, but anyway, you want to make it fun for them. Not just as fun where they sit around, they have to bring their own, you know, snack, whatever. Provide something for them so at least they have that to look forward to. Now, don't be discouraged if they don't like your game. The game that you love so much. It's a great gateway game. It may not be the game for them. Fill them out. See what they like. Do they like dice rolling? Well, then King of Tokyo, King of New York, those are great dice rolling games. I would highly recommend uh, getting them into those. Those are easy to learn, and it's really fun. It's a way to get them introduced to other games. Uh, you want just regular card games? There's plenty of that. A lot of people like Dominion. Uh, I'm not much of a Dominion fan. I, I don't know how good it is for new people. A lot of new, new people love Dominion, though, so I guess it's really good. Me, when I was first exposed to it, I, I think it was earlier this year, Eh, it wasn't for me. Card games usually aren't. But if they like something with cards to build up, Splendor is a really good beginner's game. I think they'd enjoy that. Of course, you can only play that with four players. But still, that's what we're talking about, like a small group. And then after that, your gaming group grows on its own if people start having fun. Also, if a game uh, goes short, that's a good thing because you want to introduce them to maybe multiple games in one sitting, but don't rush it. You may have a stack this big that you want to play. They just finished playing the first game, they're like, ooh, can we play that again? Say, no, 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 I want to teach you this one next. Ah, slow down, let them play it again. You know, if that's what they want to play. I played Zombies for umpteen years, and I, I was getting tired of it a little bit at the end because that's all they wanted to play. But I would let them play because it's something they had fun. And then at the end of the day, end of the night, you know, when we had one more game left in us, I would show them something different, like a Formula D or something, you know. And they'd be like, "Ooh, maybe next time I come, we can play this game a million times." Sure, you know, let them choose. Now, once they start getting into board games as much as you are, then you can start d deciding together what all games you're going to play. But first off. Let them choose, you know, kind of go to their likes, you know, avoid their dislikes or bring those dislikes back. Sometimes you introduce a heavy game a little too early to new gamers. They're like, I didn't like that. And then later on, you bring it back into them once they're, once they know a little bit more about how board games go and they're more acceptable to it. And they're like, yeah, this is fun. The first time I played, I didn't like it, but I liked it better the second time. There's games like that for me. Catan would be a perfect example. When I first played, I went, yeah, that's all right. And then I played it a second time. Someone brought her to the house and went, yeah, I really like this game. I really do. At first, I, I was resistant because I was like, oh, that's not Monopoly. <laughs> and that was back in, way back in the day when I played it the first time. But now I was like, okay, I get it now. So wait till things click. Don't force things down their throat. They may like different games. Uh, and like I said, your game group will grow exponentially there. Now, hate to say this because it's going to rat me out to a lot of people who watch this from my gaming group, but also... Let the Wookiee win. Uh, sometimes new, high, you know, new people are in your group, they need a win. They need a W to build up their confidence, to build up their enjoyment. Maybe you're so good at this game now that you know exactly how to win. Well, this is the time for you to try different strategies. <laughs> um, I never want to blow someone out. Yes, yeah, my game. I've played a million times. I know what cards are good. I know what moves are the smartest. But you know what? If I'm playing with new people, I'm definitely going to try something new. Okay, and it's probably not going to give me the victory. There have been times that I could have won where I went ahead and said, you know what, instead of playing this card and winning it all, I'm going to discard it and, you know, lose the game. Uh, because I knew the other person who had just been in our gaming group was about to win. I really cheer for them. And to be honest, win or lose, it doesn't really matter to my gaming group, thankfully. Uh, we don't have people who get too upset if they lose. So me losing doesn't matter as long as everyone had fun. The same should be said for you. If you're heading a gaming group, if someone's about to win and you think you can beat them, go ahead and ease off and let them go ahead and coast him for the win. It, you're going to be better for it. Now finally, after everything is said and done, you definitely want to gauge emotions about what people thought about the game. Uh, if they were so-so about it, or if they really like this one, uh, that's the, the path that you follow. 
uh, like I really like the dice rolling game. Okay, what are the dice rolling games are out there? You know, I really like uh, cards a lot. Okay, what has cards? Or you know, they really love the miniatures. Okay, what other games have cool miniatures? You know, you may have people who they don't really want to play because they don't want to lose. Well, in that case, a co-op is perfect, right? Because you're all working together. Now, I already said pandemic may or may not work, depending on it. It's a very popular co-op. I love it. it. The pieces don't look as exciting, but it's still a fun game. There's actually a better, what I think is a better co-op that has the pieces, the miniatures, and has a better theme maybe, or maybe a theme that beginners can, you know, maybe relate to more. And I'm going to do those videos uh, on my channel later on this week. But uh, there's other co-ops out there that can really get people interested. There's some people who all they do is play co-ops because it's all everyone win, everyone lose. And there's some great co-op games out there. Now after a while you may try to, you know, help them out. You know, like Firefly could is not really co-op. It's almost individual. Some of the expansions, they get conflictive, but you know, you don't have to choose to play those. Some of the some other games have cards where you can all, you know, you can play on your own or you can screw the other player cards. And you can get rid of those screw the other player cards as optional if you don't want to. So there's other games like that you can help them, but guide them along their path. They've got to go at their pace. Like I said, for a whole year, I tried to wean my gr gaming group off of zombies. I finally achieved that just last month or two months ago. I got the last group off zombies. Now, does that mean I don't want to play zombies ever again? No, I am always up for a game for zombies. However, now they, they each see these other games out there and they're like, okay, let's play something new. Now, that's what I like to hear. Let's play something new. Let's play something different. What's this game? What's that game? Okay, and every once in a while, there is a game I really want to play, and I'll push that on them every once in a while, but because now they're, they're my gaming group, right? Uh, they've blown up. They'll, they'll bring games to you. I've had tons of people bring games to me. It's like, hey, Matt, how do you play this? Well, I don't know. Let's read the instructions and find out. And we've had a lot of fun times playing games that people have brought in. In fact, a lot of people who bring in games, uh, there's a 50-50 chance I may buy that game afterwards because I think it's so much fun too. So I hope those tips helped you out from someone who eh, just recently, I guess, got into it big um, ever since uh, my Star Wars book collection kind of stalled. I've turned my attention to board game collecting and those are the tips that I found that helped me build a board game group. Oh, and also very important last tip, if ever I am in your neighborhood, you better invite me. <laughs> because <laughs> I love playing board games. All right, gamers, that's all for now. Until next time, game on.